Hello and welcome to Infill. This time we're making conversation with Fernando Herreth. Unfortunately, I did have some technical issues and the video finished up completely unusable. The audio, however, was pretty good, so I've decided to make this more of a podcast. And let, let's try and uh, look at the glass being half full. And maybe this is a, a good way for you to listen to it in the car or on your way to work. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping anyway. So, uh, as I say, sit back and enjoy making conversation. Hi, Fernando. Welcome to Infill Making Conversation. And uh, I suppose we should start really by you giving a bit of an introduction. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh, hi, I am. I'm Fernando from Spain. I work as a teacher and sign since 2016. I've been doing 3D printing and designing and sharing all my stuff in Thingiverse, my mini factory. Uh, lately, in Kult too. Uh, I know, I don't know what to say. I, this is a hobby for me. I make this in my spare time. Every day I try to make something, print something, and have fun. So we in, my, in my descriptions, have fun. So, so what was it that got you started with 3D printing? What was it that uh, that first sparked that interest? In 20, maybe in 2011, 12, I, I knew about the Makerball Replicator, the Form 1, the resin printer, the first version, the resin printer, and I saw, I, I remember, I saw the... How's the name of, of that? I follow in Twitter, Jessica Rosengard. Oh, yes, yes. It's, uh, it's well, Jessica Rosengard, you know, from ah, the, uh, the name of, of the company, of her company, Nervo System. You know Nervo yes. Systems? Ah. They made uh, procedural generative designs uh, some marks with manic designs, all made by code. So I was playing, I'm a programmer, I studied computer science, specialized and worked as a programmer for many years. And I always like uh, to play with both generative fractals, algorithms, yeah. art, and everything. And then I saw how how Jessica and her team uh, use the Form 1 for 3D printing their models. And I say, oh, I want, I want one of those machines. But at that time, in 2012, it was very expensive. It was the replicator comes as a kid for 2K, 2000. I remember two thousand, maybe three thousand dollars. As a kid, um, I think it was very expensive, very difficult. Yeah. Uh, a few years later, in the in the school where I'm working as a teacher, uh, some people bring us a, a 3D printer. <clears throat> we made a workshop. And I said, "Oh, that that machine, that's what what I seen a few years ago." Now it costs 500 euros, and you can buy here. Then I just tried this, made a few prints in the school, and a few weeks later I buy my, my first printer. But just a, a, a tool for I made. I always been designing and making things, and I say, oh, I can do real figures, real pieces of of what I made in the computer. Sure. And this was that, so I suppose uh, you first came to my attention with uh, with all of these, as you said, the, the open SCAD um, yeah. wizardry that, uh, <laughs> that that you did uh, with all these uh, generative uh, models, which was just, I mean, I, I, I've dabbled in programming when I was, uh, when I was a bit younger uh, and had a little bit of exposure to it um, in kind of more recent years as well in, in my job, but... I, that just blew my mind, the fact, uh, because I came from the other side. I came from the side that um, makes models, basically. Um, you start with 
you know, my background is subtractive. So okay. the idea of additive was actually quite normal to me to think, okay, you could actually go the other way and do that, but you're still starting with, this is the model that it should look like. All of a sudden, you are producing stuff that, uh, and it's not just, um, you know, the, the, obviously um, we'll get to the wavy um, stuff uh, in just a while, but you know, the, it's not just that sort of free form, you, you know, you've things like your cities, which to me, you know, that kind of blew my mind a little bit. You've got cities there with structures, with, you know, with yeah, yeah, yeah. And roofs and uh, all this sort of thing. But it's just created, you know, out of code. Um, yeah. That that is pretty uh, pretty incredible. Uh, so that was that was kind of what led you into it more than more than anything. Then the the coding side of it to to be able to create models from your coding background. I I mean uh, I'm more a procedural. I got a ten fifteen. I, I don't know since I started programming. I always been drawing with code. I, I mean, since I was a kid, I'm yeah. talking, I'm 20 or 25 years that I started programming and always coding spiral, uh, sidecars, etc. Then I jump to 3D. I see other people works. I try to copy, make my own versions, etc. I have a, a big background in, in programming. Artistic programming. I don't know. Some some people call it procedural, generative, algorithms, a uh, lot of words. So that's one side. That's the kind of um, you know this really clever SCAD, open SCAD programming and generating things. But then uh, all of a sudden you just um, show the rest of us up by uh, by starting to produce fantastic models of. Kind of space things as well. So you, you know, your your astro family, your yeah. uh, your, your, your walkers, the, the various walkers are fantastic. So I, I mean, is that something that um, you naturally grew into? Actually, kind of just modeling stuff rather than the, the coding side, or is it something that uh, you had to force a little bit? I don't know. It's, it's something. Uh, I how to explain it? Using code or using other kind of software, I use a sculptris, a sculptris, I don't know if it's yeah. sculptris for organic modeling, because it's, it's easy to, to use. I use one, two, three, the, the discontinued one, two, three design Me too, yeah. <laughs> for all the workers on mechanic stuff. But, but that, for me, the software is just the, the tool. When I have an idea, I think what's the best tool, what's the best way to make, to create the model. Sometimes oh, it's green, sometimes it's with a sculptures. I give a try to Blender, I running away from Blender. No, I did the same, yeah. yeah. I think I think I opened Blender, took one look around the interface, closed it back down open, again. I open, get lost and, and run away. Yeah. I have fun learning new new tools, new software, yeah. and I start getting an idea. Hey, I want to do that. Oh, I can do with code. Nah, I can do with one, two, three design. Yeah, okay. Oh, one, two, three design. Mm, I don't focus in, in one tool, one style, one one thing. Just get an idea and try to find the the tool that I feel more. On for table, maybe. Yeah. So it's I, I, it's interesting that, that, that uh, you talk about that. I mean, I, I guess it'd be interesting to understand your your design process. You know, where do the, where do the ideas come from? Where what inspires you, and how do you come up with? So how did you come up with the trash walker, for instance? Comics, science fiction, movies, and I don't know. Science fiction is all of kind of science fiction. The scenery of some many movies. Uh, I don't know, reading books or I don't know. Just so the time. idea just kind of pops into your brain. Yeah, sometimes pops. Always, always there a background. There are there 
and inspiration and influence, some influence on your mind. Sure. Mostly, mostly comic books and safety movies for me. But, but I don't know, the, the thrust worker. The thrust worker, uh, I was the, uh, to, the, to, the previous tow worker. I made a previous tow worker. Yeah. And I was a, a, a cup, a cup in my hand. And I say, oh, a cup and a worker. Boom, a thrust worker. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know sometimes what comes to mind, but definitely, I'm definitely influenced by Sifi and movies and comic books. And I must admit, that, that was one thing that kind of you said to me when I was um, struggling for a little bit for inspiration in battles is to, is, is to look at all of those. You know, there's, there's so many um, good designs being created. You not necessarily have to copy them, but if you look at what's there, that could inspire you more. And that's, um, that's certainly something that I've tried to uh, to tack on board that uh, that you've told me. So I guess the uh, the uh, it's almost the elephant in the room, especially because we're on the info show, and obviously Tom's involved in the info show. Um, I, we really should talk about Wavy Wednesday. Um, yes. And uh, and how that came about. Oh, that, 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 that was last summer. I was playing with a code that for making wavy bases. And then we talk in, in, in a chat group we have. We, we're talking in the chat group. Hey, I got a way. In a, in a few hours, I, I made. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, let me explain. I made the software, the code, I was working on the software a few days, a few weeks, maybe, I don't know, but I, I, some, sometimes I, I, it's difficult to me to say how many hours I spent on code. I made the, in my spare time, sure. some weekends, I spent 20 hours designing, designing, and then two weeks without doing nothing. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I work on a goal for generating wavy, wavy patterns, uh, procedurally not always the same. We can control the randomness a bit. And testing, 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 I, I, I finally get, I don't know, maybe uh, 50, uh, 50 or 60 models. Yeah. <laughs> hey guy, I got 60 models. We can launch a dozen per week or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. We can launch every Wednesday and call it every Wednesday for some, something informal, something, some kind of chat, joke. I mean, I mean, it really did go viral within the 3D printing community, didn't it? I mean, that, oh, that, yeah. must, have, that must have felt good for you to see so many people printing your designs? Ah, oh, well, that, that's, that's uh, awesome. That was awesome to see all the people, all the, some of the big YouTubers, my Joel Telling, Joe, 3D Maker, no? and all that people. But anyway, it was a, a group, a work, a work group. I don't know the English term, but we work as a team. Sure. Uh, uh, you, Tom, Graphit, Richard, some lot of people. It's an easy printing, but printing basis is easy, is fast, and always cool. The design are nice. The wavy design, the wavy pattern are very nice. I love it. Yeah. And all the people say, oh, they tend to show off the printer, don't they? It's a fast print with a nice shape. Perfect. What can be wrong? <laughs> nice walls of curves usually look pretty good on the, uh, when printed well, don't they? So, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was it was a bit of a phenomenon for a while, and then I think I, I mean, kind of on the back of that, there was a bit of a, a renaissance for your um, for your cities, and we had the mega cities. Yeah. Um, and it, yeah. It, it, it seemed for a little while as if um, as if nobody was printing anything but your designs. Oh, yeah, that. that. That summer, wow. <laughs> last summer was very, very 
productive? I don't know. I published a lot of things in a few weeks, and uh, many people read in Twitter. In I don't know. I'm, I'm on Twitter, also in Instagram, but I usually don't don't use don't use Instagram. No. But I'm on Twitter, and every day I launch a lot of new designs. Last summer, I'm seeing all the people printing, tweeting, retweeting, um, using in their YouTube videos. I don't know. What's a lot of <laughs> every day. A lot of lot of I do was printed. That's awesome. I'm happy with that. Yeah. As we've talked about, kind of you know these really popular, almost viral things. The the mega cities. The um, Anyway, you're talking about the mega cities, yes, the most yeah, yeah, cities, yeah. the monstro cities. <laughs> I thought that nothing will bring that. Uh, I I was talking with Tom and and you also in the in the group chat and say, hey, I got a, I leave the computer rendering last night and got a huge model that I'm not going to print. I never, I I, I didn't print the the monster cities. And Tom says, hey, hey, send STL, STL. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. It's, uh, it's just the exact type of thing that will, uh, it's like um, catnip for Tom. You, know, yeah. you, just, you just wave a big print under his nose and he's, oh, he's got to have that. So, yeah. I, mean, yeah, I never thought that something would spend a few days printing that. But Tom began printing. I say, okay, you print, send me some pictures, some photos. And I publish the files using your photos because I'm not going to print that that monster. I, I I'm not going to spend two kilos of PLA. <laughs> Sorry, but no, no. I spend PLA in other things. Uh, and let's say you print it, share the files before publishing. You think he will say share the files by OneDrive or Google Drive? I don't know. And some people you're telling and a few more people grab the files before publish and then I when when starting receiving pictures mostly from Tom I publish the files in, in Thingiverse but I, I, I really I swear I, I thought that not no one print something I just tell him maybe uh, seven days eight days print maybe wow. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. On my shelf behind me, I've got the Podwalker, which I think, which is one of my favourite, uh, absolute favourite models, and the, yeah. the kind of. On the Walker, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Podwalker is very nice. I always, I, I love robots. Always been, always been. Ah, I like robots. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, I, so I, it's, it's I, really I never, design. never designed something. I try some time, but I, I'm not. I, I'm good coding. I'm good programming. I'm a good programmer. I can code something relatively complicated. But with CAD, with software, I'm, I'm learning every day. And there's something, and the, the worker, the pod worker, the trust worker was the first decent design of a robot. I tried sometimes, but never found something nice. Right. I think those workers were, was the first uh, decent, the first design that I decent for print. Absolutely, I mean, I nailed it because, you know, and I've seen some fantastic prints of, of, all, of, uh, of all of those uh, walkers. Um, and the Astro family as well, the Astro family uh, are very cool models. Okay, that was a, a, well, that, that was a, fast, a fast design with a sculptures. Then I used later for the pilot of the workers. You see, there's a pilot, there's a, a woman sitting in the worker. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> that, that model is made with a sculptures. In the Astro family was the, if not the first, the second try with, with a sculpture. Right. But no, it's I nice. It's an easy, easy design. You can print without supports at any scale. With no infill. Yeah. 
Yeah, and and huge or small, like you say. I mean, I printed them quite small to see whether they'd fit with my playset. Yeah. Um, and they they work quite well. It has to be said, they do work quite well with that. But just that the the all of those designs, I think, work really well. I mean, I'm I'm doubly impressed when you're saying that's that was your second try in Sculptress. I I just the other day had a play with Sculptress, and I I can assure you that my second try will not be anywhere near as good as that because, <laughs> because the no, first but, one kind of blew my mind no but i i swear you that the my if i throw family won my second try my third try was horrible and as three i got i got made it's more having the the idea the model in your in your head sure. your mind when deciding I play it. I I play it a lot with a sculptures, but improvising, doing something without any direction, any purpose. No, no, no. I don't know. Sometimes this this one of these simple designs that you made uh, and say, what? So sometimes, nice. sometimes it didn't work. I just sometimes open a sculptures. I'm going to make a alien, a dragon. But if you don't have the the model in mind and you don't have a direction for, I don't know. Right. It is an interesting one to me because it is completely mm. alien, as it were, to to CAD. And the the CAD is the more is the thing that I'm more comfortable with, and it kind of just makes more sense. Whereas I I wouldn't say I'm particularly artistic. So you know, sculpting in clay, uh, a plasticine was never my thing. I was never very good at it. So, you know, I, I immediately pick that up and I go, oh, it's the same. <laughs> no, no, it, it, true, true, true. Mm -hmm. I, no, I'm not, well, when, when I was a kid, I, I was always sketching, uh, modeling, uh, play -Doh. Here in Spain, it's called plastic, plastilina. Yeah. The play do the clay. Yeah. That thing. And always been playing with play do sketching a uh, paper. I, I don't know. Maybe. So you would. I, I, this is kind of, a, I guess, a bit of a leading question because I kind of know the answer um, a little bit to this. But you. So you mentioned that when you really got into 3D printing yourself was when you got the. You saw a demonstration at your school. So yeah. do you take your passion for? For 3D printing and for kind of that design, both the the normal and the the generative stuff into uh, into school into your pupils. Yeah, every day, every day. I, I I'm teacher of a computer science. I don't know the the, the exact. It's a pre university course. There are computer science courses of two years. For people that finish it, the high school, right? Yep. Only, not the university. I don't know how or a college, a technical college. Uh, here is a professional formation or professional education. Yeah, could be the the literal translation. Anyway, I I teach in courses of programming of coding. I always try to to introduce some samples or they were going to learn the loop, how to program loops. Let's going to make a, a spiral. <laughs> then we have a printer in the in the classroom. Right. Sometimes, sometimes someone, hey teacher, we can do in 3D a spiral, you go, 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 go. And sometimes some students for themselves. Uh, Start designing and printing here yeah, in the, in the school. Ah, that, that's nice. And I think the students love, uh, the students like when the teacher, um, I don't know, is passionate about. Yeah, they, you say they, they basically uh, feed off your enthusiasm. Okay, I think it's good. It works. And I, I, for me, it's perfect. I, I have fun. I have a printer in the classroom. I can teach the how the for loop works. Made a model in OpenSCAD with the for loop and print. 
I mean, it is the, it's a proper manifestation of kind of physical computing, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. Sometimes words, not always. Uh, you have no time. You have no enough time to 3D printing, learning. But but sometimes, some days, maybe one or two or twice, one or twice per week, we can use the printer and make something. Right? So. I guess the obvious question is, so, you know, we talked about how um, how productive you were last summer um, and, you know, you released all these models and, uh, you know, everybody was printing your stuff. You, you, you haven't really released much recently, have you? No, no, no. That's, that's well, uh, a few things that have happened. Well, I'm being uh, mean because cause obviously I, I, I know what you've been up to. You know, you know, uh, uh, well, for people watching, I have some, I have a few designs that I am going to release, uh, we're recording that on Friday, well, maybe this weekend or next week, I release some sort of, I can, I can show you, some sort of uh, mechanic, robotic, octopus jellyfish, Things. So where I mean the obvious, I mean that is fantastic, and, and as you know, I've, I've, yeah, uh, I'm, yeah, 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 I'm yeah, lucky I enough to no. be able to uh, have printed some of this and and assembled it, and you know there, there are an awful lot of parts you print, but it is a fantastic model, and that sound that it, that it makes, that the tentacles make, is uh, so, <laughs> the rattle that that it makes. Oh, <laughs> it's fun. That's a funny enough, I'd encourage everybody to uh, to go and print them and. And experience the joy that is the uh, assembling of them. What a fantastic job you've done! Assembling is fun. You can print all the little parts. As no screws, no no glue, no nothing. So I've been I've been working. I, I'm working in uh, a secret project. is uh, is not a uh, is not the war. A secret project. It's a it's a big project. That yes. took me quite long time, and I don't want to, cause I don't feel good. I, I don't want to preview to spoil what I'm doing. It's a big design, yeah. a lot of parts, uh, multi part, lot of parts. But I don't want, I don't want to to publish nothing. I don't want to to show the development. You don't want to publish parts of it when. Uh, but that, the yeah, reason you want to wait for it all to be done. I don't want, I don't want uh, to feel the pressure of finish the the project. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. It's a it's a sign that I could make in a few months, but I'm taking easy. I'm working a few hours per week, and maybe it took me one year. And I don't want to to say, hey guys, I'm doing that because I don't know when I will finish. Exactly. <laughs> Then when, I, when I, I guess the the other uh, the part of that as well is that uh, you know you're not going to get bored of it that way because because if, oh, okay. if you get bored if you get to the point where you think oh God, I'm sick of staring at this joint that I that I just can't decide how it goes, you can yeah. walk away whereas if as you say if you'd kind of release part of it and then people were expecting another part to be released uh, or, or the pressure <laughs> that I I don't want to to I I, I don't like that that. I, you know, we talked a little bit before about what, um, where you get your ideas from, and uh, you know how this inspiration comes. But uh, I mean, this is, this is pretty left field. Where did this one come from? That that started as a test for a, um, for a tube, for a, some sort of wiring that I could assemble and use as a as a dreadlocks or as a wiring, something something like that. And then when I printed that. A few, I see it, eh? looks like the tentacles of a octopus or something. And I don't know, the jellyfish, the jellyfish idea just comes to mind. Oh, uh, I can do a semi-sphere here, add some mechanical parts. I know that you've got other ideas that, that, you'll, that you'll release eventually using that same kind of methodology and the, the actual assembly of it and the way it, well, it all works yeah as you know yeah no supports no glue no excuse no, no infill i didn't <laughs> no extra hardware 
Ah, no supports, no supports. I hate supports. Ajá. Ajá. Supports are evil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I definitely I printed um, all of mine. I printed with no infill. Ah, uh, no infill, no infill. Oh, uh, that parts can be printed two shells, three tops, and no infill. Yeah. That's not what I planned, but I I made release. I designed some. Hey, look at that. Yeah, connectors. Yeah. I connect. Exactly. Not planned, but, but eventually I design I designed some connectors. So what well, if you print enough pieces, enough tubes and connectors, you can make some kind of mesh or I don't know. I don't know. The people think what what they can say. I've seen my son playing with connects yeah. and stuff like that and, and I, they're making shapes. They're not me necessarily making things, but I, I think that will be just as satisfying. And obviously, the, the you know the, the big advantage of anything that you um, that you you release that is available for you to three D print is that you don't have to go to a shop to buy an extension pack. You know, if you want another meter of tentacle. Yeah. Then you can print yourself another meter of tentacle, you know. So uh, I, yeah. I think it's, uh, you know, I think it's a great thing. And as I say, I think as people get to uh, get to see it, get to print it and assemble it, and then play with it, I think yeah. I think people will come up with more and more uses for it. So yeah, uh, yeah, it's easy, easy to print. Um, what? <laughs> Just print. I have. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I have a box full of pieces of failed tests. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, some people told me in, uh, last summer was a lot of, I released a lot of, of, of stuff. But anyway, I, I just, I'm doing that in, as a hobby, I have no pressure. Sometimes I make three designs per week or I spend three weeks without any design. Yeah. And all that project on that big, big, pseudo secret project yep. I think my last publish was in October in summer I published a lot of things yep. I published almost weekly one design one variation of any other design um, and then I started with the big project and also I need to um, to quit a bit, no, to, to take it easy a bit. Right. Just to kind of oh, recharge slow. a little bit. Or maybe I, I was, I want to slow down a bit, always spend my time in, I don't know, I don't, but I, I can. Always, this summer, I, I remember this summer, I'm going to, to stay two weeks uh, away from printers and design. Okay. And one month away from printers and design. And then, as uh, worker, every Wednesday, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. that is something that I've yeah. kind of learned as well because I was I was setting myself targets of the number of models I would release in a year. Yeah. And as soon as you do that, then you do start churning them out as well. So I, I was putting stuff out and thinking I'm not happy with it. I actually printed, so you know. Um, all the rockets and the spaceships and my, my playset and the idea was that they were very basic because they were for young children to play with um, mm. but I, I think maybe too basic and I, I you know I've kind of taken some of the, the advice that you gave me to to try and uh, put a bo bit more detail into them and I'll uh, uh, you know without making them too spindly and li you know li more liable to break in for young children because that's definitely what you don't want but I actually um, I designed a model I printed it printed it twice it was a it was one that was in separate parts and all glued together glued it all together and I kind of sat and looked at it and thought I hate it I absolutely hate it and I, I never released it <laughs> just went away and it was just like you know I, I and I think at that point I think I went you know I'm not I'm not touching I'm not designing anything for a couple of weeks and I literally had a couple of weeks where I didn't even think about it and I think that kind of taught me that I need to uh, 
take a step back. So I think it's it's what you're saying is that kind of you know you can burn out. I think a little bit by the the pr pressure that you put under yourself um, as much as anything that you think I must, I must, I must. Well, this has been absolutely fantastic. It's been really good chatting with you. I just hope people understand and, <laughs> and apologize. <laughs> understand my, my my English oh your English is fine really honest I guess we'll, we'll wrap it up there and uh, it just leaves it for me to say thank you very much Fernando Jerez for thank spending you. the time to uh, to answer the questions and for making conversation okay thank you Ian for your invitation let's see what I, I don't know <laughs> thank you we, we we know we're friends for some time ago, we almost talk every day, sure. and I feel good. I, I, I feel good. I know you can do something nice with your channel, this interview, more interviews that are to come, more people that in talking about their experience. Yep. I don't know. Thank you, Ian.